A young tiger dazzles in Richmond's come from behind dream time win. St Kilda's goal kicking come back to haunt them yet again. And did the Brisbane skipper hurt his team in more ways than one? All that and more to come from the round so far brought to you by Amy. But Kane Corns, we start in the West, a brilliant game of footy. And it looks like Richmond for, by how much it stages before the Bombers mounted an almighty comeback in the final term. Yeah, it was an unbelievable atmosphere. The scenes were terrific before the game, post-game, during the game. I thought the skill level of some of the players tonight, Dustin Martin, Darcy Parrish, Shay Bolton, uh, Merritt, we're seeing Bolton here, his ability in the last quarter to stand up. They were challenged really strongly tonight from a young Essendon group who didn't disgrace themselves. They kicked the first four of the last quarter. You thought, oh, hang on here. And then Richmond kicks the next seven. seven. It just reminded us all what a champion team they are. So terrific performance from the reigning premiers, led by some young and some old. They were brilliant tonight. And what a game of footy it was. Shea Bolton, eight score involvements. Dusty had 27 and three of his own. It was the turnovers where they punished the Bombers earlier in the game. Incredibly, Richmond kicked 101 points from turnovers for the game. Which is their most since 2005, which is remarkable because this is what they've built their dynasty on is the ability to pressure the opposition, force them into turnovers, not only that, then go back and score. So that's the critical thing. Not only do they set up so well behind the ball that they sort of cut off any really threatening moves a lot of the time for Essendon tonight. Examples like this where Bolton intercepts the ball and then off they go. Pretty ordinary up from Tipper there. He was down again tonight. Win a 50-50 ball there and then bang, you are gone. So difficult to defend. And you got an opportunity to tackle, you got to nail it. Bolton's so hard to tackle. And Jack Graham there, I think he's in line for the most improved player in the competition. He's such a good finisher and goes under the radar, has you know struggled at times over the journey to be a first choice player, has had some injuries. But this year, he's been one of their most important midfielders with Prestia and Cochin and Edwards missing some footy. Terrific again tonight was um, Jack Graham. One man who might contend for that role and that title is Darcy Parrish. 44 disposals tonight. He won the Yoakin medal cane in a losing side. He was phenomenal. He's prolific. Absolutely prolific. So he's, uh, when you look at sort of what Tom Mitchell did in his Brownlow medal year, compare the numbers. I mean, the numbers he's putting up are extraordinary. So he had 25 at half time. Uh, he wins contested footy, uncontested, 11 clearances again tonight. Can't remember how many times he's had 10-plus clearances this year. So he's won the Anzac medal already this year. He's won the medal tonight. And he almost willed his team over the line, which is saying something for a young midfielder who at times has struggled to, to find his feet at the level, playing as an inside midfielder. The only concern is that him and Merritt for the Bombers there too, the sort of middle in the prime of their career stars are out of contract. So they've got to stitch them up. I'm confident they will do that. I'm sure they'll stay with um, the way that the Bombers are playing. But... Yeah, I was surprised Richmond didn't put some more time into him at stages tonight. And Parrish's performance was really uh, franked by the fact there was no Dylan Shield, no Jai Caldwell, and for much of the game, no Andy McGrath. He hurt, hurt a knee in the first five minutes of the game. That uh, Essendon midfield was decimated. Didn't look good, did it? So, you know, 12 minutes to go in the first quarter, and one of your, your best prime movers and strong leaders is off the ground. Now, the only good news is the club said uh, during the game that it wasn't an ACL injury. But who knows, it didn't look great. So I doubt whether he'll come back for the rest of the year. I hope I'm wrong. And Dion Prestia there, once again, they're saying tight hammy or some sort of soft tissue injury. With his history, um, you wouldn't think they'd take a risk on him for a big game against West Coast that's been brought forward uh, next week, unfortunately, for Dion. Yeah, that game meant for round 14, brought forward to round 13 to make the most of the Tigers being in the, in the West. So they'll play the Eagles next Sunday. To the next game we go, Kane, the SCG. G Sydney, they've won 11 of their last 12 against the Saints, but they were made to work for this one and were hanging on for dear life in the final term. Yeah, these are the big moments late. Kennedy, big goal, and he's done that a number of times across his career. What about Higgins' stat line? He's taken 12 marks, 20-odd disposals. He's had seven shots on goal. Unfortunately, he kicked one goal six, and that was the difference between the game. You know, as, you know, as positive as it is for Jack Higgins to be getting his hands on the footy as much as he did, and the Saints kept coming hard. He was just unable to finish. So Mark's there. I just get the feeling he was rushing his set shots, particularly the last two. He's played on there after a few seconds, puts himself under undue pressure, and then the one we're going to see in a moment that he had a shot to put the Saints in front where he takes a great contested mark coming in from Crouch, 
He just rushed it. So you see 150 there. He marks the footy. He's having a shot at about 128. He had more time than that. Take your full 30 from the moment the umpire sets that time. Go back and kick it. Thought he rushed it. Heartbreak for him because he was so good, so influential, but wasn't able to be the match winner. Yeah, the Saints have gone from the second best goal kicking team last year to the second worst this season, only behind Fremantle. Now, as for the Swans, we've spoken so much about their youngsters this year. How about some of these older names that are getting the job done? Kane, seven clearances for Tom Hickey today. Luke Parker was close to best on ground. These guys continue to get the job done. Well, to have a strong club and to have the youngsters coming through on the right path, you need this. You need the core. You need those leaders that are setting the example, that have been there and that have learned from the ones before them. And Sydney got the best culture, I think, of any team in the competition. These are the players that move the needle. These are the ones that decide whether you make finals or whether you win finals. The young players are an absolute bonus. They bring the energy, the excitement, the speed, the enthusiasm. They don't bring the consistency as these players do. So Rampy again, what a skipper he is. You've got the job on King tonight, you know, giving away a lot of height, got it done. Luke Park has been a star, as has Lloyd. Cunningham so reliable and Buddy Franklin um, still going strong and chasing down a 1,000 goals. Can't wait to see that. The Swans are 8-4 and four now. They sit three, go- three games inside the top eight. As for the Saints, they're now 5-7. and seven. One silver lining today was the performance of Tim Membry. Brett Ratton said post-game, uh, he could probably do with two Tim Membrys in his side. He was really important in the outcome of this game. Yeah, I haven't seen him used much in this role before. So we're seeing him mark the footy on the last line, playing the kick behind, but then going, so he's going to save a goal again here. He's had 20 disposals, had eight marks. He's kicked two goals. What, what a well-rounded game. And seem to read the ball really well and get into some really goal-saving positions, but then do this also, go forward and kick one or two. So perhaps that's you know, that's the next evolution of his career. It's a really difficult position to play as that second or third tall forward in a side that is inconsistent and inefficient with the way that they move the ball. So I'd like to see them do that with Max King a little bit, get him up the ground. Uh, clearly the pressure has weighed on him since he kicked that one goal five against Geelong a few weeks ago now, he's not the same player. Get him up, let him play with some freedom like uh, Ratton has allowed memory to do today. Brett Ratton did say he was playing with a bit of a back injury today, hurt himself at training on Thursday, but was good enough to get through the game. As for Jaron Geary, hurt his shoulder in this match. Kane was taken to hospital for assessment, but the Saints tell me tonight his shoulder is back in place and he's back with teammates in Sydney. To our Amy Clangers, we go next. Gee, this is an absolute monster of a falcon. 60 metres off the boot. Jake Lever cops one of the mush. Yeah, he reads the ball better than anyone in the competition. On this occasion, he didn't. So it takes a lot to get him out of positions, one of the, having one of the best intercepting seasons we've ever seen. Didn't read it well then. And you wanted to point out the security guard. Sunny day in Sydney. Security guard sitting there with his hand over his face. No sunnies or cap for the day. How about this from Nick Vlosten? It is the middle of winter, yeah. Nick Vlosten was angry, but then he was nice. And the Adelaide fans took on the advice from the chief health officer, <laughs> Dudge Doc. Duck and don't touch the footy, whatever you do. All those restrictions that the fans had to go through were nothing on what the Pies had to go through. Kane, they're on a flight at 8 a.m. this morning. Steel Sidebottom said they were sitting around on bean bags in the rooms, uh, waiting and isolating for this game at the Adelaide Oval, and it made the victory even more sweet. Uh, Jamie Elliott kicked six goals. He's our Saturday star. Four of those in the first quarter in his first game back from a fractured leg. Professional performance from this Collingwood side with the challenges you said. This this is one of the stories of the year. In fact, it's almost my favourite individual game of the year. He hasn't played since round two when he broke his leg and came out and looked like Lee Matthews playing in the fourth line. That's how good he was, particularly early. He could do no wrong to the point where the ball wasn't coming down in the second quarter. They only had four inside fifties in the second quarter. Buck said... Well, I'm going to leave him down there. He's on fire. I'm going to put him on ball. And he does this out of the centre bounce with five minutes to go in the last quarter to put Collingwood back up. Credit to his professionalism, whatever he did in rehab. And, and often, you know, it is easy to get yourself up for the first one back. So the challenges will come for him later on as his body gets a little bit tighter and he adapts. But just thought the way that he moved today and um, the ability to expose a matchup that was favourable towards him was such a professional performance. What a game it was. He was the difference in that game. Yeah, six goals and a match winner is a fair afternoon at the office. We wanted to take a look at some of those leading patterns behind the goals because this is a thing of beauty. Yeah, absolutely. So the timing of it, and he's so good at running back towards goal. He's back to the kicker. 
And it's almost like you're in tune with the person who's going to kick the footy. You do this at training a lot. So running away from the ball at the right time, bang, tick lead back up towards the kicker, makes it easier for the kicker, gives him an option. It can only happen when Collingwood move the ball faster, which they definitely did today. Only need a couple of metres on due day there and bang, kick was spot on, he goes back, and that was for his third, I think. So he was the beneficiary of some actual decent football that Collingwood played today and no doubt they had more intent to move the ball forward which was a nice surprise. They've played seven debutants this year. Two of them really stood up today. Trent Biacco and Caleb Poulter and both kicking important goals at crucial stages. Yeah, so in games like this and seasons like this, you're looking for the silver lining, aren't you? So Callum Brown's second half came on as a medical sub. 11 touches, seven tackles. Dacos is going to be a very good player. This composure from Bianco there, that's where you want it. Jordan Ngoi goes back and kicks a goal. Once again here, look at the stage of the game. Late in the third quarter, when players around him are struggling to kick it, he goes back, doesn't look to pass it off, takes it on himself to kick his first goal in AFL football. And the same with Poulter here. Doesn't look to pass it off. Look at the score. Puts, puts his team within two before the last break, kicks a big goal from outside 50. And then he had moments late like this in the game where I thought both of them used a significant amount of composure. So I look at Brown, Dacos, Poulter, Bianco, and Quainor, and you think, oh, hang on, you know, maybe there is a core group of young players that will be able to rebuild this Collingwood list. The Crows have now lost seven of their last eight games. Is their season slipping away? Is this more of what you were expecting to see at the start of the season? No, well, hang on. Two, two weeks ago, you were asking me to readjust, readjust my criticism of Adelaide. You said they were the worst team in 30 years. Surely knocking off Melbourne. Come on. As for the, your predictions, though, surely this is more of what you're expecting to see. Well, well, Mitch, they've lost to the 16th-ranked side who kicked one goal to three-quarter time and have averaged 50 points in the last three weeks without their star Ruckman, without their star Mitch River and Taylor Adams at home when they've flown in on the day of the game. So I think you know where the Crows sit. They're 15th. They've won one out of the last eight, as you said. And I reckon you just answered your own question. All right. Well, $50,000 fine as well for the Crows today. That's a big slap for not wearing masks last week uh, on their flight back from Sydney when they played Richmond. So $50,000 to come out of the soft cap as well. Back to Friday night, Kane. The Demons, 11-1 and one for them on the season. They were made to work for it. 20 points down at the main break. They looked a different team from what we saw of this in the first half. Brisbane came out with an intent to attack and we saw some aggression from McCarthy and Hipwood early, but this was what was impressive for me. So their open field tackling, they closed down the space so quickly. It's what Melbourne have been doing to teams. So... In open play, in fast play, they got to them really quickly. They had a number of holding the balls. I think it was five in the first half that they were able to, you know, make Melbourne do this, uncharacteristic things, fumble it, then get caught with the footy. Look at the closing down of the space. But in the last quarter, they got through the D. So whether Brisbane tired, whether they just slipped a little bit, whether there was some more intent for Melbourne to just move it on that fraction quicker because once they broke open from that open style that Brisbane were able to shut them down early, they got one-on-one -on -one looks inside 50, and McDonald was the beneficiary of that, along with a couple of his teammates, including Pickett, who kicked three. So just a stunning performance. Um, their consistency, yes, last week I thought was terrific. This win against Brisbane, challenge at halftime to adjust, was even better. And that man you saw there, Tom McDonald, quite up until halftime, had nine disposals after the main break, and all nine of those were score involvements. He's been a big part of their resurgence this year, as has been their defence. Have a look at some of these numbers in the last 10 years. They now sit fourth, uh, up to round 12, for the least points conceded at this point of a season. Yeah, it's a nice premiership profile, if you like. So they defend so well. But they're not Dower. So I, I remember the 09 St Kilda team, Dower side, Fremantle 2015 under Ross Lyon, Re really Dower sort of side, 2006 Adelaide. So Melbourne are, they're the best team to watch in the competition. They're, they're just playing football the right way. Really strong defensively, force the opposition into errors, but then they go. So they're so well drilled defensively, which gives them opportunities when they do turn the footy over. But... They're not playing a Dow brand of footy. They're, they're exciting to watch. And you know, I said it about Brisbane. If Brisbane are on the TV, I'm watching. Well, it's the same as Melbourne. And it's a full credit to them. They should be a big beneficiary of the rolling fix. You just put them in prime time slots every week. The Lions had their seven-game winning streak snapped. This is a big moment early in the third quarter. Came. They led by 20 points at the main break. They had the ball in possession. Their skipper, Dane Zorko, waxed Tom McDonald. He's been given one week ban by the AFL for an intentional low-impact strike. But it's the uh, flow-on effect that occurs from here. 
Well, that's it. I don't think it's worth a week. I think there's rules just to allow for a free kick. That was a free kick again, so right call from the umpire. Not sure it deserves a week, but to have your captain do that, look at the look at the score and the time of the game. It's a turnover. They go down, get Pickett going. He kicks a goal out of that, almost a two-goal turnaround, and Dane Zorko was hardly excited after that, and nor were some of his teammates who got rolled in the second half. So as the captain of the free club, as good as he's been for a long period of time and he's been a really strong leader this year, that was a poor moment and one that really let his side down. He acted selfishly, and that's that's the nicest way to put it. Yeah, to the ladder we go next. Melbourne is sitting pretty on top uh, before the D- the Bulldogs play Fremantle tomorrow. Important win for Richmond there in seventh to really hang on there. Absolutely, and they just got to get themselves in the top six, home final, Richmond, and then who knows, before the end of the year, got a few injuries. Massive, massive games tomorrow, particularly for West Coast, who are in real danger of falling off a cliff, I think, and of needing a rebuild. Big injuries will get to that. Fremantle have to stay in touch with the eight, um, that win there against the Western Bulldogs, if they can pull that off, will be important. Bulldogs need to respond, and we'll get to Carlton right now as we look at the fixture coming up for tomorrow. Yeah, well, that is a massive game. West Coast have six injuries, some big names out of that side. Carlton, four and seven, Kane. They can't afford to go to four and eight. Have to win no Allen, no Kennedy, no Kelly. Uh, three out of their top ten play. You just have to win that game. Neutral venue at the SCG. No excuses for the Blues, absolutely none. Win or go home tomorrow, and the pressure will significantly mount on David Teague if they lose that game tomorrow. To our one more thing, how can we look past the spectacle in the West? As you said, 55,000 people jammed into Optus Stadium. This was great viewing, and the uh, WA public put their hands up for more big game footy. Congratulations to them, to everyone, to the AFL for putting this on in the most trying of circumstances, to the players for adjusting their schedules to be there. It was everything that's great about our game. I mean, the stadium spectacular lit up. The scenes before the game, on the ground and in the walk up to the ground and after. It's such a special fixture and it's just as special as in Perth. We all love it to be at the G. But well done to everyone who made that happen tonight. And Perth even putting their hand up potentially for a grand final tonight. Let's hope it doesn't get to that. Kane, hopefully see you in the studio next week. That'd be nice. See you, Mitch.